Um, and then also um, something that I thought was just very intriguing um, and pretty exciting um, to me. <laughs> I'm going to put that also on the camera. And it's A Tiny Revolution. And this is from the November 30th Des Moines Register. And let's see, I can speak more on it. It also kind of deals with construction some, somewhat and then people taking direct steps to um, improve their own lives. And so uh, it says, to save money or simplify their lives, a small but growing number of Americans are buying or building homes that could fit inside many people's living rooms according to entrepreneurs and the small house industry. Some put these wheeled homes in the backyards to use as studios. Others use them as mobile vacation homes, but the most intrepid of the tiny house owners live in them full time, often living off the grid. And I'll put that on the camera so you can see the interior of the home right here. Here's, you know, a man and his living area, this is the kitchen, and maybe the bathroom's back there too somewhere. And so it is a pretty tiny space. I'm gonna flip it over and it shows the sleeping area in the in the eaves and how it looks on the outside. Oops. So that's the man, that's the size of the home right there. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> I actually do, I like it. Gregory Johnson, 46, who works as a computer consultant at the University of Iowa, co-founded the Small House Society with Schaefer. And so that's, um, let's see, Jay Schaefer. Before he got married, Johnson lived for six years in a small cabin he built himself, and he wrote a book called Put Your Life on a Diet, Lessons Learned from Living in 140 Square Feet. We go to the inside and read a couple more about that. Most of these tiny homes can be hooked up to public utilities. The houses are sold for 40000 to 50000 ready-made. Those who do their own building pay half as much. And so these little houses are built with higher quality materials and better insulation um, than trailers but they still have wheels that make them portable and allow owners to get around housing regulations. And so um, I like the fact that a lot of people are downsizing their homes and then some of them are living off the grid, not using public utilities. And the concept of that is pretty exciting for me. Um, maybe that I could put my home up somewhere and then have a little windmill or some solar panels and carry on with, with my day, and when I'm ready to move, I can, you know, pack up or something. It's pretty nice, and I like it, and I hope um, that takes off and goes uh, in whatever direction it's supposed to. <laughs> All right, um, so there's also um, something kind of in the public of works arena. Um, this is a article from the November 15th business record and it's Carlisle receives Vision Iowa grant for trail expansion. I'll show it on the screen. It's a little copy instead of the actual paper right there. Okay. So it says during the meeting that they had on uh, November 10th, the board approved funding for a 1.10 million grant to the city of Fort Dodge for construction of 15 individual recreational trail projects, which together comprise the first phase of a comprehensive trail network within Fort Dodge and Webster County. The Vision Iowa program provides financial incentives for communities for the construction of recreational cultural, educational, or entertainment facilities that enhance the quality of life in Iowa. And bike trails do that. Um, I do not bike myself in Iowa, but I have, even though I am from Iowa, but I have biked in other states that were actually more bike friendly at the time. Um, and so it does add to the quality of life, um, just getting people outside and exercising and showcasing the natural environment and then also um, creating a, a green form of transportation. 
Chet Culver signed the legislation that funded um, Vision Iowa grants through the iJobs program. Elements of the project include an on-street trail that will connect North Park with the Scotch Complex, Scotch Ridge Nature Park via the Carlisle Youth, Youth Soccer Complex, an off-street trail from the Scotch Ridge Nature Park to Car Carlisle Middle School. So it's adding to the ecosystem. It's adding to um, the whole natural environment. Um, I love biking myself. I biked in Chicago, which inter interestingly enough, I found more bikeable than Des Moines, and you wouldn't think it would be. Um, but in many aspects, um, I, maybe because the mayor was a biker himself, um, it created a more, um, uh, well, well, I'll show you uh, with this next um, item on, <laughs> on the screen. This is the last four miles. Um, and someone sent me this from Chicago through my email. And basically what it is, it's a plan to complete Chicago's lakefront park system. And that includes the bike trail, which is pretty extensive along the lakefront in Chicago. You can actually ride from Indiana if you want it to through Chicago, through Illinois, up the North Shore, all the way up into Wisconsin, um, if you want it to. I've actually ridden from Chicago to um, Kenosha um, on occasion. So basically, anyway, they're showcasing um, a project that would connect the trails and open uh, spaces and parks and natural areas along the lake shore. There are four miles of the lake that are not covered. Um, with the trail and so they want to complete that there is some opposition from developers um, But they're doing an exhibit at Chicago State University on the fourth and in, in the university library um, That exhibits going to be running through January 31st um, 2011 and so planners from Des Moines might be interested in that whole um, uh, exhibit or the whole concept of completing the, the trail system on the lakefront. Um, this is sponsored by the Friends of the Parks, Chicago State University Library, Lake Calumet Vision Committee, and Chicago State University Geography Program. I think it's worth looking into. <laughs> All right. This next article also comes from the business record, and I'll put it on the screen real quick. Let's see. Um, can't see it. <laughs> um, it says the George Sherman Project, and this is about the Minneapolis-based developer who visited Des Moines um, a few weeks ago to unveil the Rumley Lofts, and this is downtown Des Moines. Uh, George Sherman, who founded the Minneapolis-based commercial real estate company in 1991, was in town last week to unveil his Rumley Loft Project, a 66-unit affordable housing development at 104 Southwest 4th Street. Um, they also completed the Vine Street Lofts uh, Apartments in 2004. And then, um, let's see, the Rumley Lofts, um, that began leasing on October 1st, one and two bedroom units. And Sherman expects the building's resident spaces to be 70% occupied by January 1st. So we'll see where they're at with that. 